When all 21 million Bitcoin are mined, what comes next? Hi viewers, what if Bitcoins are mined? In today's video, we are going to look into the instance of when all 21 million Bitcoin are mined and what comes next. Bitcoin defined as the only asset in history. The only asset in history to possess complete mathematical scarcity is Bitcoin. Any member of the network may confirm this scarcity, which is controlled by the Bitcoin Core algorithm included in the source code of the cryptocurrency. Because to this method, miners that produce blocks can now earn freshly created Bitcoin. The block reward assists miners in defraying their heavy mining expenses. However, the algorithm halves the block subsidy every four years in a process known as the halving. This process will carry on until the flow of new Bitcoin decreases to zero Satoshi per block, which is expected to occur around the year 2140. What happens? The network will stop producing new Bitcoin after all 21 million have been mined, which is predicted to happen around 2140. Miners will continue to collect transaction fees, which will account for an increasing amount of the block reward, even after the block subsidy drops to zero. These transaction fees will become the only source of income for miners and consequently for the security of Bitcoin. Reaching Bitcoin's hard constraint will have a variety of effects on miner incentives and the cryptocurrency's economic architecture. Doubters are worried about whether costs will keep security levels high enough. Although this worry is legitimate, the ongoing uptake and expansion of the Bitcoin network and its usefulness show that a developed fee market is feasible. The income received by miners is essentially slashed in half during a halving. In every sector, a 50% decline in sales has the potential to drive a company out of existence. A miner's retreat from the network might put Bitcoin's security model in jeopardy because mining in this situation directly protects the network. Bitcoin naysayers think that low miner fees might result in worse security and a declining value proposition for Bitcoin itself as the block subsidy swings towards zero. Doubters have also voiced concerns about a currency that depreciates. Some academics have asserted that there won't be enough Bitcoin to sustain a monetary system, and that Bitcoin's high price would prevent it from supporting retail payments, even as the cryptocurrency's inflation rate continues to decline. The block subsidy. First, the block subsidy, the freshly created Bitcoin, plus the total amount of transaction fees paid within a block make up the miner earnings. We refer to this amount as the block reward. Therefore, when transaction costs are increased, the block subsidy is not. The need to transact on the network will increase as Bitcoin use increases over time, and fees are anticipated to rise in order to partially compensate miners. This is due to the fact that a certain number of transactions may be validated every 10 minutes. As a result, in order for transactions to be completed quickly, traders must bid. Impact of technology. Second, the technology used to mine Bitcoin is advancing at an exponential rate. Since their launch in 2013, ASIC specialized microchips used by miners to mine as efficiently as possible have seen significant advancements. A miner may be able to recover some of the additional money lost due to the halving if they can reduce expenses and improve the energy efficiency of their mining operation. Dynamics of energy prices. Thirdly, energy prices differ in various areas. In order to optimize income, Bitcoin miners frequently look for places with the lowest power. Because Bitcoin mining is not location specific, miners are free to set up shop wherever the cheapest energy is available. This makes it possible for miners to operate in isolated locations like on an oil field or next to a hydroelectric dam that are inappropriate for other kinds of enterprises. Additionally, as technology develops and the energy landscape changes to include more efficient and renewable sources, some miners will see a reduction in their energy expenses over time. A miner may withstand a loss of income without having to close if they can lower their energy expenses over a four-year period. It is important to remember that miners usually do not pay the consumer rate for electricity. Typical mining operations may bargain more directly with suppliers to get the cheapest energy because they are big clients. Probability of miners' income. Fourthly, a miner's anticipated income depends on their proportionate fraction of the overall Bitcoin hash rate because of the difficulty adjustment mechanism in Bitcoin. Because of this, miners that were able to maintain profitability should enjoy higher profits in the event that other miners are forced to shut down as a result of the halving, since their relative portion of the overall hash rate has grown. 
mining becomes less difficult as the overall hash rate decreases. A halving can boost profitability for miners that keep going since it will reduce competition and raise the chances that they will find a block and get paid. Decline in income denominated in Bitcoin. Finally, a decline in income denominated in Bitcoin may result in a rise in revenue denominated in fiat currency due to the growth in the price of Bitcoin. Since most miners still pay for their expenses with fiat money, their revenue in fiat currency matters more to them than revenue in Bitcoin. Consequently, a miner can withstand a 50% decrease in the block subsidy without losing any money in currency terms if the price of Bitcoin doubles over the course of four years. Bitcoin will gradually become the world's toughest currency as its inflation rate is halved every four years. Bitcoin's inflation rate decreased from about 3.7% to about 1.8% at the 2016 halving, when the block subsidy decreased from 12.5 BTC to 6.25 BTC. This made it less inflationary than the 2% stated US dollar inflation objective. Bitcoin will be less inflationary after its 2024 halving than even gold, an asset that has traditionally been prized for having a low stock-to-flow ratio. Many scholars are afraid of what happens to an economy when there is deflation of money. They would contend that the deflationary policies of Bitcoin will drive up interest rates to unacceptably high levels and leave the financial system with inadequate money, so impeding growth. Each Bitcoin is divided into 100 million units known as Satoshis by its creator, Satoshi Nakamoto, in order to address the perceived issue of a lack of money in a system. Therefore, demand in an economy would not be destroyed by Bitcoin. Instead, it will cause a shift in demand from current commodities to those of the future. The deflationary effect of Bitcoin would hurt certain businesses that provide flimsy, disposable items, but IT and other sectors would profit greatly. In reality, during the past 30 years, there has been tremendous deflationary pressure on the tech industry as a whole. While the quality, variety, and usefulness of computers, phones, and televisions have increased dramatically, their prices have either stayed the same or decreased. Consumers throughout the world have kept buying devices in ever-increasing numbers despite this deflation. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe our channel and leave a comment in the comment section below.